The other thing that irks me about iOS is the inconsistency when it comes to large print. Apple doesn't take it far enough in my opinion. Now, if you go into your mail or your iMessage, which I, I, I won't go in there because I'll end up showing friends and family's personal information, which I obviously don't want to do. But um, if you go into like programs like messages and uh, iMessage and an email, you're going to get large print in the message part of the application. But the side menu is puny. And if you look at the icons on my main screen here, or not the icons, rather the text below the icons, it's puny. If we go into iTunes, sure, the menus or the, pardon me, the headings are very large. So for those of you that can't see this, the headings are in dark, bold, big black letters because I've got my large text accessibility setting to the maximum. But the, the descriptions of the albums are microscopic. So Apple, if your user has selected a large print option, we don't just want occasional large print. We want large print everywhere. Yes, of course you can switch voiceover on, you can switch zoom on, but why should we have to? If large print is your accessibility option of choice, we should have large print a lot more consistently. Now, of course, Apple is not going to I understand that they're not going to put large print in the side menus for aesthetic reasons, but they could put, at, you know, they could, they have enough room, especially on the iPhone 6 Plus, iPhone 6S Plus, the iPad, you could put larger print in those sidebars. Now, there are certain apps that are great, like I'll show you here, here's the calculator. It's wonderful. This, now this is a third party app you can get from the iTunes store. And here's like a clock. Again, I got that from the iTunes store because I don't always want to have to turn my iPad off to check the time. So I got this large print clock. But then you've got stuff like the calendar. Now the numbers are eh. The numbers are okay. They could be bigger, though. I do have to squint at them to be able to read them. And those of you with one or two percent there, you have no chance at all of reading these numbers unless, you know, you got voiceover on and whatnot. But the text in the calendar is is too small. Now, granted, on a, looking at a month view, they can only fit so much in, but they could still do better with such a giant screen in the way that, you know, you can make software to sort of uh, adjust to text size and re re um what's sort of looking for re render the the graphics there's no reason why they couldn't have larger print in the calendar another point is the timer look at all this waste oh no this is not the calendar or not the item i wanted sorry the timer helps if i go to the timer one moment because i forgot where i left it here we go so the timer Look at all this wasted space. You're looking at a huge iPad screen here. All this wasted space. I Again, I stress I'm on large print option. Do you see anything even resembling large print? I shouldn't have to view my timer like this. I should be able to view the whole screen. And there's so much room in here. Total wasted opportunity. And Apple tends to do that a lot with their iOS devices, they are, they don't take full advantage of their full screen. And I mean, yeah, you have the odd app that is pretty good. But you know what, actually, with what I tend to do now, this is kind of a segue over to iPad. I, I, again, this is more, this, this video is for those of you considering to get an iPhone. But just as a quick aside, Apple tends to be known for not maximizing their, their iPad screen for their apps. And, and now, I actually tend to download iPhone apps whenever available. I download the iPhone version because it makes it larger print and more accessible because I find that the iPad apps, they cram a whole bunch of information into the screen and it, they don't take advantage of the room to offer large print. But this is, an, here's the, an old weather app, which has told, I don't even think this version is available anymore, but I've kept it over the years and refused to upgrade it because 
And look at that font. It's beautiful. Even the smaller font, if I hold my iPad close enough, I can read that without having to use any magnification. So, you know, certain apps like that are, are great, but I just find a lot, so many apps in iOS could be larger. Now, another thing I want to show you is the issue with widgets. Now, widgets are only available in the notification panel and you cannot resize them. Now, sure, you can use Zoom to look at the image, but then you're stuck looking at only part of the widget at a time. And the whole purpose of widgets is to be able to view information really quickly at a glance. And this kind of defeats the purpose when you're only seeing a fraction of it at a time. Now, of course, I could reduce my zoom level. If my iPad would cooperate with me, it doesn't want to cooperate for some reason. There we go. Uh, but I could reduce my zoom level to a lower, um, lower level. And, and look at the widget. But as you can see, I kind of had to fight. I don't know if I need to clean my screen or what, but I'm kind of being, having to fight with the Zoom. I shouldn't have to deal with that. I should just be able to go and resize my widget so that it's larger and I can read it without having to play and fight with Zoom. So that is uh, you know another thing just to be aware of is it a deal breaker absolutely not and i realize i'm being overly picky here but that's just because i i want you as a consumer to to know about the downsides because apple they are wonderful for accessibility but there are some oversights that they just maybe didn't think about maybe for aesthetics they've decided to just leave by the wayside but it's just something to know as a consumer so you can make an informed choice because you do have a choice you are not completely limited to Apple anymore. Those days are gone. Okay, so this ended up being a crazy in-depth comparison, even longer than I even thought possible. So rather than splitting up into just two, I'm gonna actually split it up into six sections. So part one is gonna be part one A, B, C. Part two will be part two A, B, C. So if you've listened this far, first of all, thank you very much for sticking around. Number two, give yourself a freaking medal. <laughs> And number three, if you're on a desktop, click your screen in the middle there. It'll take you to the next part. If you're on a mobile phone, just go down to the description. I'll put the link below. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. Here at Circle of the Blind Mice, I bring you these videos because I believe technology enriches the lives of those of us with visual impairments. My mission is to help you learn tech, use tech, and embrace tech. Please like and share this video to help spread the word to your fellow blind mice. And if you're new here, please subscribe for new videos every Wednesday. Thanks for watching.